Hello, <clears throat> this is Susan Bartle. I'm a watercolor artist. I live in South Central Kansas, and very soon uh, we've, we're going to celebrate Kansas Day, January 29. So I thought it would be a good time to uh, record this little easy beginner uh, watercolor project um, in honor of Kansas Day. Um, so what I've done here is uh, we've got an outline that I found on the internet, just a simple line drawing of a buffalo. I sized it to the right size and I uh, taped it to the cardstock and then I put some transfer paper. This is Cyril Sally Wrap in between the buffalo and that and I traced around it with a pen. That leaves me an outline like this that I can now um, paint my design. But if you, if you want to draw your own, of course you can, but this is an easy way to skip the drawing part if you want. Another one I've done before is a um, Christmas card with a reindeer like that. I've chosen to put it on this uh, Arches Cold Press watercolor paper, 140 pound, uh, and it's sized at three and a half by four and three quarter. And that's so that um, it can fit on a greeting card like this when I'm finished. So I just uh, glued this with, um, I like to use rubber cement because I can mush it around kind of and get it to line up with the edges. And then I, I have an, under here another piece of complementary paper that kind of frames it. And I just glue it to a piece of cardstock find an envelope that's uh, an invitation sized envelope, fits right in there and you've got a really nice uh, gift to, to send to somebody. But this is a really easy um, watercolor exercise. So I'm going to use a primary um, palette here, limited palette. These are my three favorite colors. I paint all my watercolors with these colors. Uh, they're Windsor Newton paints. This is Permanent Rose, this is Windsor Yellow, and this is Windsor Blue Green Shade. I find that these three colors, with, with them I can paint all the colors of the rainbow. But this, this project was, is just a fun way of showing how the colors mix in and match. And uh, as you notice on, on, the, on the finished painting I have here, it, it still looks like a buffalo, even though it's not a, an exact painting of a buffalo. The colors are just blending in there and running and making all kinds of wonderful, exciting designs. But it still looks like a buffalo because it's an outline of a buffalo. So you could do stripes or polka dots or whatever. You could do a, an all-in-one color and it would still look like a buffalo. So what we're going to do first is we're going to, uh, this is a round brush here. I think it's a number four comes to a good point, holds a lot of water. We're just going to um, put water on the inside of that um, outline we've drawn. And uh, the nice thing about, about painting a buffalo is that, and the reindeer is, is an example of something that doesn't work quite as well in this regard. Buffalo is a shaggy animal, so if you're, if you're, um, get a little bit outside the lines here and there. It's, you know, the buffalo's maybe molting or something. <laughs> Do buffalo molt? Shedding. Um, and so we're just gonna put water on here inside the outline and the water needs to be um, so that it's shiny, so that when I put the watercolor in there, it can move and, um, freely and form its own colors. I found with watercolor that uh, what's really fun and exciting about it is to place the color in in the water wet you know wet this is called wet into wet this technique and just let the water mix the colors because it you get much more vibrant and interesting mixes of colors than if you try and control it too much. Watercolor is a dance between um, control and letting watercolor do its own thing. So a little bit out of control too. And a lot of people find that kind of scary. I find it thrilling. So, uh, you know, you need to just look at it as playtime and 
um, a sort of a science experiment where your attitude is, what would happen if? And then you do it and you see. And it always comes out different, which is also part of the excitement. Okay, so I've got water all in there. I don't know if you can see, it's kind of shiny and puddly. And that's the way we want it. So now I'm gonna uh, activate my paints. These are these were on here dry, and with water they come to life. So I can take this palette in the car with me and paint in the car, which I do sometimes. I call it car painting. Um, I haven't done that for a while, but you can. It's real easy, transportable, and you can pick it up anytime. Reactivate the paints and just. Carry on. So I'm putting a, a coat a coat completely uh, over the whole buffalo of yellow uh, as a basis for, so a buffalo is a brown color, which includes all three colors of this primary palette we've got here. But not, and like I said, I'm not gonna try and create an exact replica of a buffalo, but I am going to give it all a basic yellow coat here. You don't have to do that though. You can do it however you want. I find if you do want yellow in your painting, it's best to put it on first uh, when you're mixing paints. It mixes better as the um, base color or the color that gets put on first than it does later. Not that you can't do that too. There's no hard and fast rules there, but experience has taught me it's best to put the yellow on first. All right, now I'm going to get into my red. Put some red along the top. I've got a shaggy uh, Heart here in the front. All right, and then I'm going to get into my blue, put it on the shadow side. Like I said, you can do this however you want, and it'll still look like, still look like a buffalo. Try not to, um, I can flick the paint like this to move it, but I'm trying not to do it with my brush strokes because it's, like I said, it just makes for really interesting um, color mixing. You can see how it's kind of moving and making its own colors in there. Its own designs. So if you let the if you let the water do the mixing, it just makes for really interesting colors. Now, if I want to, I can go back in and add some more yellow. Can you see how it pushes it out? It's fun to watch. I just love projects like this because they're just they're just like they're just playtime. So much fun. Drop the paint in and see what it does. I kind of got kind of a lot of water on there. So one thing I could do about that, I have some a paper towel here. This is a Viva Viva paper towel. It's my favorite kind because it's absorbent, but it doesn't have any um, pattern in it. So it's if I wanted to wick up some water like I'm going to do here, although here I'm going to use the edge. It wouldn't leave a design. Another thing I could do, and this is a lot of fun, is I'm going to add a little bit more red in here to intensify that color. Like I say, this is just this is just playtime. It can be however you want it to be. I'm trying not to mix it too much. A 
Well, that is, like I said, that's getting too wet in there. Here we go. Okay, um, I've got this sea salt and um, it makes a really cool effect when you put it on here. So this is a grinder. Um, you, I find I get better results with the big uh, chunks of salt than with table salt, but you, table salt works too, but then you just turn it over and this makes a nice even. You can also do it with your fingers. Um, spread it with your fingers. But this is the way you kind of get a nice even coat. And then what if you do if you use the salt technique on here to make um, texture, you do have to wait until it completely dries. And then you can scratch off the salt and it'll make little um, concentrations of color where where the salt um, pieces are. Anyway, a fun little technique there for you to try. Blow some of that salt off so you can see it. There you go. Happy Kansas Day. <laughs>